Hey guys, what is going on? It's Joe here filling in for WrestleMania. The WWE's invasion angle is considered one of the biggest examples of a sure thing that turned into an epic fail. However, what the fans saw wasn't what the WWE originally had in mind. Here are the original plans for the WCW ECW invasion and the reasons why it never happened. By 2001, the WWF had bounced back from the brink of defeat, overtaking WCW while clandestinely feeding money to a cash-starved ECW. McMahon had come close to losing his company, but his comeback and other machinations meant he would soon own both WCW and ECW. McMahon had obtained a clause in his lawsuit against WCW that allowed him first rights to purchase WCW. McMahon's loan of money to ECW also meant he received preferential treatment in bankruptcy court should ECW go on the auction block, which it did. When both WCW and ECW went out of business, McMahon swooped in and purchased both companies for a song, obtaining their tape libraries and the rights to their names. With WCW now his, McMahon decided he would take his time slots for Monday Night Raw and SmackDown and devote them to WCW and the WWF. The idea being he would rejuvenate the WCW brand and eventually launch a WCW vs WWF storyline. Although McMahon did not sign WCW's top stars such as Ric Flair, Sting or Goldberg, he felt he would make do with the stars he had. In order to do so, the WWF would run a storyline where Linda McMahon caught husband Vince McMahon backstage in a compromising situation with Tori Wilson. While the WWF did air a segment where the WWF's genetic jackhammer was caught with his pants down, there was no follow-up. Originally, the follow-up would have been a storyline divorce between Linda and Vince, with Linda getting Raw's time slot and Vince keeping SmackDown's. Shane McMahon would ally with his mom, meaning WCW would air in Raw's former time slot and the WWF on SmackDown. Bruce Pritchard noted, Preliminarily, the whole idea was to have two completely different, separate brands with different creative teams, actually different marketing teams, the whole nine yards. That was the pie in the sky, oh my god if we could only do this and pull it off. Obviously, that didn't happen. Given the WWF's amazing job in turning its own moribund promotion into a corporate juggernaut, recall the WWF had gone public in 1999 partially based on its remarkable turnaround, there was hope that the promotion could work its magic and rebuild WCW into a thriving brand. Once established, the possibilities for a WCW vs WWF series were many. Would the two companies battle in an invasion? Would they compete annually in a Super Bowl-type competition? First, the WWF would have to get WCW back on its feet. Vince McMahon didn't see that as a problem, but as a challenge. He even toyed with the idea of airing it on TBS. According to the book Sex, Lies, and Headlocks, McMahon also irked Kerry McCluggage, a Viacom executive, when, during the course of his negotiations to purchase WCW, he argued he should be allowed to produce a version of Nitro for TBS. McCluggage scratched his head in disbelief, wondering what Vince thought he'd signed when he agreed to the exclusivity clause with Viacom. Vince had moved Raw from the USA Network to Viacom's TNN in 2000 which makes it understandable why Viacom's executive didn't want to see Vince helping the competition. Nevertheless, the possibilities were enticing. Former WWF creative executive Bruce Prichard has gone on record as saying, The interest, just so it's clear, what we were interested in was if there was a possibility that it could remain on TNT. The time slot was interesting. Being on another network was interesting. Being able to take the brand and expand it on an already established time slot, on an already established network, so that was attractive at the time. When we found out that really wasn't going to be a possibility, it changed to the library. Undaunted, the WWF continued its quest to revive WCW with its own show. With Viacom's rivals unavailable to air Nitro, the WWF looked to airing Nitro on TNN. The WWF faced problems getting a time slot. First, TNN's parent company Viacom did not want a WCW programming airing in the slot they'd purchased for Raw. According to the book The Death of WCW, Viacom, specifically the national network, TNN, which eventually became Spike TV, original home of UFC and TNA Impact, on which Raw aired, didn't want to do any more wrestling programs. They had enough. And they didn't want Vince to replace his highly rated WWF show with WCW, as they'd paid top dollar for the ratings Raw drew. And they didn't want those numbers to be potentially sliced in half. TNN refused to give the WWF a second primetime slot, telling them they could only fit them in on Saturday nights between 11pm and 1am. 
The WWF decided to make the best of the situation and began planning its WCW relaunch. The WCW relaunch was more than mere speculation or legend that's grown over the years. A review of the New York Daily News archives reveals that there were definite plans for a relaunch. In a special to the Daily News, Dave Shearer reported, The WWF announced last week that on June 9 it would run its first WCW show since taking control of the company. The event will air on tape delay on the national network, TNN, that night at 11 p.m. Since making that announcement, I have learned that the date may be pushed back, but the relaunch of WCW is coming, whether it's June 9 or shortly thereafter. With the WWF delivering much-needed ratings to TNN, why would the network be reluctant to add another show, particularly one likely to deliver good ratings? Dave Shearer commented, But even though the addition of the WWF's Raw is War program transformed TNN into a top 10 cable channel, various industry sources have told me that TNN is less excited about adding two more hours of wrestling to its weekly schedule. TNN has used the WWF audience to roll out its new schedule of shows, but while the higher ratings have elevated the network from one that was known for truck poles and rodeos to one that now can compete with basic cable giants USA and TBS, sources tell me that TNN doesn't want to be branded as a wrestling network. Yahoo's wrestling newsletter, Wrestling Newsletter Online, also discussed the WCW revival as well as the WWF soliciting suggestions for the show's name. The April 11, 2001 issue reported, the first WCW show under the WWFE umbrella will now be taking place at the Patriot Center in Fairfax, Virginia on June 9th. Jim Ross last week announced that the show will be taped and aired on Saturday night via a tape delay between 11 p.m. and 1 a.m. Eastern on TNN. WWF.com has a poll featuring a couple of names for the new WCW Saturday Night Show. Among the names featured, there are WCW Saturday Night Nitro, WCW Hotbox, WCW Uprising, WCW Late Night Appetite, WCW Hard On Saturday Night, and WCW Primal Urge. According to Dave Meltzer, the WWF scheduled a tour for Shane McMahon's WCW, fully expecting to run two separate brands, WCW and the WWF. However, several forces aligned to make sure that this didn't happen. With the WWF making plans to relaunch WCW, the company decided to air a WCW match during an episode of Monday Night Raw. The match featured Booker T taking on Buff Bagwell with Scott Hudson and Arn Anderson calling the match. The match was received as warmly as a two-hour tribute show to Roman Reigns would be today. The WCW bout was a disaster with both men putting on a lackluster bout and the audience making their displeasure known. Shouts of boring, this match sucks, and Goldberg filled the arena. Vince McMahon didn't like what he was seeing in the ring and, more importantly, what he was seeing in the audience, bored fans. This debacle and other factors killed the idea of a WCW relaunch. Vince McMahon was still dealing with the fallout from the XFL's failure. If WCW flopped, it would be seen not only as a failure, but a failure at what McMahon did best, wrestling. McMahon was also concerned with only having one show for his WWF superstars. Furthermore, ECW's owner Paul Heyman also told Vince that ECW should take the spot as WCW was dead. Ultimately, Vince McMahon killed the WCW relaunch and went with the invasion angle. While the invasion as we know it failed, wrestling lore has it McMahon toyed with the idea of visiting the angle in 2002, this time bringing in the big names he'd failed to hire the first time. According to a 2010 story, they, the UK magazine Power Slam, also mentioned that there was a proposed main event possibly at Survivor Series 2002 or around that time, consisting of what quite possibly would have been the greatest match of all time with Team WCW, formed of Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, Goldberg, Sting, Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, Booker T, and Scott Steiner, taking on Team WWE, consisting of Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, Triple H, The Undertaker, Chris Jericho, Kurt Angle, and Shawn Michaels, with the premise being that Team WCW would be formed by Flair and Eric Bischoff out of frustration for the previous Invasion angle, which was filled with too many mid-card superstars and WWE names to be a proper WCW. And so Flair would assemble a team of expats to show the WWE what a true WCW Invasion would be like. Unfortunately, Vince McMahon was reluctant to revisit the invasion angle, possibly because it would mean acknowledging the original's failure. Well guys, there you have it, the original plans for the WCW ECW invasion. Be sure to leave your comments and share your thoughts. In the meantime, make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of our great videos.